Tu te vene? Oh, we both have Beatles. Yeah, great. <laughs> This is funny. <laughs> So hello everybody, uh, today we have a special video with a very special guest, he is considered um, maybe the, the greatest living acoustic guitar player, please welcome Mr. Tommy Emmanuel. <laughs> That's kind of the applause. <laughs> That's the applause, great. And where are you at the moment, Tommy? I'm in my house in Nashville. Oh, great. Yeah, uh, I, I have been in teaching a guitar camp in Cuba. In, in Havana, in the city of Havana, um, with uh, my friends Vinny Raniolo and Frank Vignola. Great, I know him, he's great. Yeah, so we, we were down in, in Cuba for four days and we, we had a beautiful time. We played concerts, we did a master class every day and, uh, and uh, we, we learned also from the local Cuban musicians and um, It was a really beautiful experience. So we're looking to uh, bring a guitar camp to Europe next year. We're trying to work out where is the best place and everything. So Italy is the All best I place. Can say, Italy is high on the list. <laughs> Great, <laughs> fine. Thanks. And um, well, I had a, a quick look at your tour dates, See? and it seems you are you know, changing location, playing gigs every night in a different place from now until yeah. March or April. Yes. Yeah, uh, it is very, it's, uh, as they say in, uh, in Italy, it's full like an egg. <laughs> um, so uh, oh, this year, earlier this year, I recorded a lot of music and I wrote some songs and uh, I did a lot of different things. So. Earlier in the year, I, I had a, some periods where I didn't tour as much. So now, but from now on, it's busy for the next six months. Um, and this will be good for my, for my, my, uh, my playing. Touring for me is the best thing for my playing because every day I have a concert, every day I practice, every day I sound check, I play with other players, and, uh, and you have the excitement to play a concert every night and, and that makes your playing better yeah and isn't it tiring because for example eric clapton recently said that he can take any more of of that of you know always taking the flight do you do you still like it i i still love it and and i love playing the concerts the hard part is not seeing my family as much um and you know i think I try to remain very healthy in my, in my, my body, so I eat fresh food, good food, um, and this keeps me strong. I am so rarely ever sick and, uh, because I'm too, I'm too busy and, and uh, uh, my focus is on uh, being, being the, in the best uh, condition that, that I can be. So uh, it's very important for me to uh, eat well, to get good rest, Uh, to practice and, and to make sure that, that um, I'm in good shape when I go on the stage so I can give my best. That, that's all I care about I see, on, I see. on the tour. Yeah. yeah, and well, we talked about your condition, your um, health, but what about um, music? Do you think it's, well, you, you travel a lot, you see the situation in, in many countries and for example in Italy we say that if you want to be a, a professional musician you'll have to struggle because music is not in, in good health. What's your opinion? Um, I music think music in industry maybe. It's a wonderful industry, it's the best. It's, it's, uh, I can't imagine to do anything else but to play music. But you see, um, uh, I think people Uh, have the wrong idea about the music business. They think that it's uh, you, you must get rich and you must get famous. And if, if that's what you think of the music business, then you are completely wrong. Because all that stuff has nothing to do with you being a good musician and doing a good job. So when people say, oh, the music business is terrible, it's, uh, it's finished, there's no work, they are completely wrong. They know nothing about it. I, if I, the truth is, 
I could work 365 days a year if I allowed myself. That's how much work is out there. There's tons of work. There's enough work for everybody. Yes, of course, but you, you are Tommy Emmanuel. What about uh, a less yeah. famous mu musician? Yes, but are you, I'm telling you that I came from nowhere with nothing and built this myself. So um, it's up to you to put in the effort and, and the time. When people say, how can I get started doing what you're doing? The, the answer is, you must get some good songs. You must get your show together, get your playing together. Because when you walk on the stage, everything is exposed. When the audience is listening to you, they're listening to how you play, how you sound, if you're in tune, if you're in time, if your ideas are good, and they want to be entertained. They want, to, they want you to tell them a story. Take them somewhere. And that's our job. Our job as guitar players uh, and as entertainers is to take the people from their ordinary lives and move them to another dimension almost. And this is the magic of music, but it's a great challenge. Um, but everybody has a different way. I mean, there are people who are very happy just to play in a restaurant on the weekend, and that's just wonderful too. There are some people who want to be in a, in a heavy metal band and, hit, and go on the road with this heavy metal band. That's great too. I like to do what I'm doing, and I feel very lucky and very grateful that people like what I do, so I have a good job and I have lo lots of work. Um, but it wasn't always like that. I mean, I spent many, many years playing for free in, in restaurants so I could eat. And many times in my life, I made the decision, do I have new strings or do I eat? I had wow. this decision many times. So, you know, people think because they discover me on YouTube that I appeared like, like, like magic. No, I worked very hard and I still do. And I always have. And I, I came from a very poor family from, with no training. And, uh, and so if I can do it, I think you can. Thanks. And mm. well, talking about uh, your music more specifically, um, I know that your first record was published in the late 70s, if I, if I remember correctly. That was, yeah, un under my own name. Before that, I played on many people's records. Yeah. But... How, how has your music changed over years? Well, I hope it's got better. Um, I, I, I think the more you learn, the more you try to understand what it takes to write a good song and to make a good arrangement. And, um, and this is all part of the process, you know. Um, uh, Paul McCartney said something so beautiful at, uh, at a university. He said, we, we are like computers, you know. When you take a new computer, it has nothing in it. Then you download all this in stuff into it, movies, the, uh, music and ideas and things. Suddenly this computer now has something to print out, to, to give, to, to show us. And we are like that. We start off like a canvas that has no paint on it. And then slowly through our life, through experience, through listening and taking in, we start to make a, a picture, a painting. And that's really how it goes. Paul McCartney said he could not have written a lot of the songs he wrote if he didn't listen to Chuck Berry and, and uh, Little Richard and, uh, uh, and all the people who wrote all these great songs in the early days. That was what gave him something good to draw on, to say. And the same for, for me. Um, I started out listening to country music and uh, instrumental music by The Ventures, by The Shadows. And this was my first music. So I had a good start. I had good melodic songs to learn. And I found out very early what is a good song, you know. But I still didn't know how to write it, but I knew how to play it. And so it took me some years of working and working and learning, trying, asking questions and asking other musicians you know, how, how do you write a song like that? And, you know, um, and so between the ages of 15 and 25, I was more interested 
to listen to singers and songwriters. And so I, I constantly listen to the Beatles, to um, uh, Carole King, James Taylor, Neil Diamond, Gordon Lightfoot, uh, Don McLean, um, uh, all those kind of people who wrote melody and chords and then beautiful lyric on, on top. And I fell in love with this concept of, of uh, a melody with a beautiful chord moving uh, under, underneath, you know. And um, so I try to write songs uh, in a way that when you listen to it, you, you might hear some words in your head, even though it has no words that I've written to it. Although, you know, when I wrote Angelina, mm -hmm. um, I actually wrote Angelina in D, mm -hmm. which is here. I don't think I could have written something like that if I hadn't listened to James Taylor and Stevie Wonder and people like that. You know, in those days, I, that's all I listened to. I didn't sit there listen, listening to Barney Kessel records and try to be a jazz guitar player or listen to, um, you know, a B.B. King and try to be a blues player. I was more interested in songs. So that's how my playing evolved. And then, of course, I then fell in love with listening to blues players and jazz players and then uh, uh, rock and roll music and all that. And so it, that's kind of how I evolved. Now, I also want to say that with Angelina, I one day I put the capo on here. And suddenly the song sounded like it was where it, it, it belonged. It belonged in E, not in D. And it was more sweet and more soulful in E. So when I when I got up to here, then the words came to me. Angelina, come to your daddy's arms. Angelina, I'll keep you safe from all. Angelina, sit on your papa's knee. Angelina, don't you go too far from me. So, you can see how the song evolved. Started as an, a simple melody idea, and then when I got the sound of it right, then the lyric came to me. And I, I, have, I have a question about this, um, about your voice. You, yes? you often sing... Uh, on stage, do you think that yeah. this is something to develop in the in the future, in your oh, future I, music? I, I was a better singer, um, but I'm not a very good singer, um, and so I sing to try to break it up and give people something different instead of just all instrumental. Um, and there are some songs like uh, when I when I sing uh, when I sing a Merle Travis tune, you know, um, yeah, with that nine pound hammer. It's a little too heavy. Uh, I, I can handle that because it's not Stevie Wonder. You know, <laughs> I, I can't sing, you know, a boy is born in hard time, Mississippi. You know, it's, it, it doesn't suit me. And I, I don't want to pretend that I'm a singer. I, I'm not. I, I love to sing. And some people like my voice and some people don't. So I, I just sing what I think I'm, I'm good enough at. And, and I try to do my best with that. But be, um, uh, my, my main issue is that um, my hearing, my hearing was burned out before I came into the world. I am wearing oh, this. I didn't know that. Yeah. My hearing has been bad ever since I was born. Um, and so when I, when I can't hear my voice, then I can't tell if I'm, I'm in pitch, you know? So that's why now I'm wearing technology in my ears to try to hear the voice better. But if I could be on stage and wear headphones, it would be fantastic for me. But I can't do that because I need to hear the, the people, I need to hear the room, and I need to feel in this moment. As soon as you put the headphones on, 
you go to another dimension kind of thing. And I love that sound, but and, and it, it helps me to play and sing better. But but to be with the audience and with the people, you need to be the same. So Yeah, I t- totally I, agree with you. I don't use inner ear monitors or any of that stuff. I just hear what you hear when you come to a concert. Great. So I, I try to give the best sound that I can with everything that I have around me, you know. Yeah, you mentioned technologies and, you know, we are in the digital era. Um, yeah. Well, how this affects the way you record um, acoustic guitars? Are you still an analog boy? For example, you like recording or on tape no. or what about no. all this kind of stuff? No, the difference that I see, I still use uh, valve microphones and valve preamps to record with, with a microphone. But the difference is there's no tape. It's just going straight to Pro Tools, right? But it's the same principle. I'm still setting up a good microphone. I'm sitting in front of it, finding the sweet spot, putting my headphones on and recording myself playing. And I'm not going through saying, oh, I must fix up this finger noise or this, this little noise. I don't do any of that stuff. I play and what you hear is honest. It's this is me playing the song from start to finish. No editing. No edits. No. I don't need to edit because I'm a musician. I can play. That's true. So, Definitely true. Yeah. So recording for me is capturing the performance. Great. So we're in the digital, people think that digital is so different to analog. And I'll tell you the difference. The difference is when you use analog with tape machines, you have to wait for the tape to rewind. <laughs> That's the only difference I hear. So I don't, I don't need to wait. You just use Pro Tool as, as your recording device, as your, um, how you record things. And then you can use all analog stuff to that point, And you still get that beautiful, natural, warm sound. But you know, let me tell you, Claudio, the best thing that an artist can do is find the right engineer. Yeah, that's true, of you know, course. Because so I, you, you, don't, I, you don't produce guitars yourself? I do not. I am not interested in being a sound engineer, although I kind of sometimes I, I wish I could do stuff at home. But, you know, I write my, my songs and I record them on my iPhone. And it, it must work on the iPhone. If the song doesn't really work on the iPhone, then for, forget it. It's not going to work when you put a million dollar studio around it, you know? So first, you must have a good song. So then I, I, I write the songs, I make the demos on my iPhone, and then I go to a, a good recording situation, somebody's good studio or uh, uh, um, with the right engineer, and we record it, then we take it to where we're going to mix it, we, we mix and we master, and we're done. That's you it. Know? it the, if I was clever enough to do it all myself, I would, but I'm not. I, I want to concentrate on playing the guitar the best I can and write the best songs I possibly can. I, I hire people whose life is what they do. Like my... my um, my recording and mixing man, his name is Mark DeSisto, and he's in Los Angeles. All he does is record and mix. It's his life. And he's so passionate about it. It's just the same. I, I am passionate about music and playing the guitar. He's just as passionate about recording me. And so for me, it's so easy. If you listen to my track, It's Never Too Late, that was recorded in his house. I sat in his lounge room on a chair with a wooden floor. Yeah, he put one microphone, which is, I, I know that microphone very well. Um, it's a beautiful microphone. It's a Neumann from the 50s. He put it in front of me and he said, play a little bit. And then he turned the um, uh, capsule yeah. till, it, till it kind of the sound opened up. And I said, there it is, there, there it is. And then I moved a little bit and I said, that's the sound. And we. We, he went into the control room and listened. He said, yeah, I think we, 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 we got it. So 
I played the song one time. That's it. That's the recording on the album. Fantastic. And that's the sound of my yellow uh, 808, my maiden uh, guitar called the Yellow Mouse. That's what that guitar sounds like exactly. Okay. So, and uh, changing a little subject, you're also a teacher. Well, yeah, I'm also a student. A teacher, yeah. <laughs> and what about technology in this field? You know, there are many uh, online courses. I, I do that myself, um, you know, uh, in-person lessons versus online lessons. What, what's your opinion about that? It depends what you need. See, the thing is, we, you and, and people your age are the luckiest people in the history of the world because you have everything laid out for you. You have the songs, the arrangements, the instruction. You can go into a Uh, a DVD, an instruction DVD, and slow down the right hand, freeze frame the left hand, find the chord shape. Um, it, everything is given to you, you know? I think you, you so, think I'm, I'm younger than I am. I, I had to learn by ear. <laughs> There wasn't no tabs, no computers when, uh, I, when I started playing guitar. But I'm just saying that this generation is very lucky that way. And, you know, that tells me something. It tells me that they have no excuses. If they cannot get it and cannot see it, then there's something wrong. You know, they're not understanding the music in the right way. When you hear someone play something, you must train your ear so you can tell, oh, that's D, that's B minor to E minor to A. You can hear it. You just need to develop your ear that, 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 that way. And I'm sure that, that you do the same thing. Yes, you of course. Know? When I'm on the radio, I think that's a fourth degree, that's a dominant chord, and that's what I do usually. <laughs> well, good. Yeah, yeah it's well, fine. I, you know, but the people write to me nearly every day saying, send me the tabs for blah, blah, blah. And I say, no, <laughs> watch it on the video and work it out yourself. Don't use tabs, you know. Don't, don't take the easy road. Learn it properly. You train your ear. Become a real musician. That's true. And what about your um, uh, practice time? How many hours a day do you, do you practice usually? I, I play and practice when, when, when I can. See, um, a, a classic example is uh, I came back from Cuba and I was playing all day, all night at the camp, teaching, teaching and playing, playing concerts and all that. And uh, so I had five days of playing all day and all night till midnight, then sleeping and get up and do it again. Then I came home and then I, I had to mow my grass. I had to cut the, 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 the trees. I, I had to do manual labor, you know, when I got home. I had no time to play. And uh, yesterday I had to do a, a radio and then a, a photo shoot. And then I had to go to the dentist. Then I had to come home and I had no time to play yesterday. So today I'm playing, you know, so that, that's what my life is like. But w when I'm on the road, I'm playing all the time. I, I, I get up early and practice in the morning uh, and then I travel. And then when I get to the hotel, I practice a little more. Then I go to sound check, play an hour, hour and a half. Um, and and is, then is, I is play the Is that true that, that you dedicate Uh, one hour a day to your thumb practice. I read, I read it some, somewhere, I don't remember where. No, I, I don't practice one thing in particular. I practice playing songs. And I play, I play them as if I'm playing in front of an audience. Um, but like, we are, so, we are so different all the time. Like today, I'm, I can tell because I've been mowing the grass and cutting the trees and all that, that My hands are a little stiff. So, you know, this morning I had to get up and play some songs a little slower to start to warm my muscles up. So I, I played a tune like this. Something nice and steady, just to get my hands to start, you know, and then I, I, I may switch. So forth, 
you know. And... Yeah, so now I'm, I'm starting to bring the speed up a little bit and I'm playing a little harder. So my muscles are starting to warm up. Warm you know? up. So, yeah, yeah. So. Fine. And one last question, Tommy. Give me tuto. Yes, I, I will. Do you have any advice or suggest? Well, your level appears to be unreachable, but do you have any advice or suggestion for young students who are starting with, with guitar today? Of course. Start with simple songs. Don't, don't try to say, okay, I've been playing the guitar for six months. I want to play Lady Madonna like Tommy Emmanuel. Don't do that. That's wrong. Start with simple songs, you know, and, and, and try to play those simple songs well and then move to slightly more difficult, slightly more difficult. So take it slow. Just remember that it takes time to become good at anything. So you, you can't expect to play the guitar for one year and set the world on fire. You, you must realize that if you want to be successful as a musician, you must take time and you must get it, gather experience and give yourself a lot of time. I have been playing guitar professionally now for 55 years. And I feel like now I'm, I'm starting to get a handle on it. I'm starting to understand it. And I enjoy it more than, than, than ever, you know? And so just be ready for practice and, and knowledge and keep your mind open. Don't close your mind to just one kind of music. Keep your mind open and keep your heart open and listen and learn from everybody, okay? Thanks. Uh, so, um, you are playing some gigs on October time in Italy, in, Bar in Barese. Yeah. I'll see you, of course, with uh, our, friends in co our friends in common, Davide Facchini and Anita Camarella. See. And so, it will be a pleasure to see you again, mm -hmm. and it's been a pleasure uh, today. Would you like to greet our fans? Indeed. Yes. Uh, Claudio, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to all, the, all your uh, people who watch your site. And it's always for me such a joy to, to talk about the guitar and the mystery of it and the, and the love of it. And, um, and I appreciate all the fans there in, in Italy and we are really looking forward to, to coming back. And uh, Andy, Andy and I are very excited to play a lot of new things for our audience. So. We, we, we are looking forward to, to it. Grazie. Thanks, and, Tommy. Uh, Si puoi essere amici per sempre. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. Grazie.